Welcome to Exo Magic Trick number 349. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Exo Magic Trick 349 to 352. Hey, Trick 349, we have a great chart. We want an automatic chart with the last nine weeks data. Now we have our data set over here and we want to just have a formula here that will tick every single day. It'll show us today's formula and when it gets to a new Monday the chart should update showing the last nine weeks. Now I have a, a little formula here and then we'll create oh, just to show you how it works and then we'll create it from scratch. If I show Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, notice how the chart is still showing 9-7. That was the Monday. But as soon as we get to Sunday, and watch this, as soon as I get to the next Monday, watch what happens there. So it gets to September 14th and now the chart updates. This is the last nine weeks of data. So we want to see how to do that. Let's go over to this sheet right here. We have our little data set and it could be any increment or any, uh, it could be Friday. This one just happens to be Monday and then that's the uh, following five days sales data and so that's the way this one was set up. The first thing though is we want to put a formula here that'll just figure out what day today is and that is equals today. It will, every day you come in, uh, show you today's date. So I control enter. Now I have that custom uh, or a format there, control one, date, and then that. As we all know, a date is actually a serial number. If I click on, and th this is just formatting, if I click on general, notice what's right in the cell. It is 40,023. That means how many days since December 31st, 1899. January 1st, 1900 is one, January 2nd is 1900 is two, and uh, today's date is 40,023. I'm going to control Z. That'll become important later when we create our for formulas, understanding what a date really is. That is format. Underneath is a number. Okay, so we have our today function here. Now the trick is, is to get a formula here that will always show Monday until this. So on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it should still show Monday here. I'm going to scroll over like this, make this a little bit bigger. We're going to use the date function, and the date function requires three inputs, year, month, uh, day. If you put 2009, comma 1, comma 1, it will show us January 1st, uh, 2009. F2, that's not one, but that's how the date function works. We would like to base this whole date construction off of this. So the first thing we'll do is year. And year takes a serial number boop, and delivers just the year. So if I highlight this and hit F9, you can see that that's 2009. Control Z to undo. Comma, month does the same thing. But it will deliver the month which is what we want, and I'm going to hit F9, you can see that's 7. Well, so far that's working out pretty fine. We have the year and the month. The next argument is day, and that's where the real magic in this formula is going to work. First, let's use the day function. Same thing, serial number. It's going to deliver here a 29. But we don't really want a 29 right there. We want it to say, if this is Wednesday, we want it to say Tuesday was 28, Monday was 27. We want it to say 27. Well, we're going to have to subtract from 29. You know, if it's on Thursday, now, then it will say 30, right? We want to subtract from it the result of the weekday function. Now, the weekday function also takes a serial number boom. But instead of delivering a 29, depending on what we put in for this argument, and there's lots of different options, you can go look and help. I'm going to put in a 2. 2 tells weekday. If it's Monday, put a 1. If it's Tuesday, put a 2. If it's Thursday, uh, Wednesday, put a 3. So right now, that's 2. And I like 2 because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and Sunday would be 7. Highlight this and hit F9, and what do we get? Three. Is that clever? Control Z and it's dynamic. These are all linked serial numbers to this, which is automatically incrementing because we have the today function. Now, that won't work because 
29 minus 3 is what? Uh, Sunday. So we want to just add 1. Add 1 there. And so now we should get 3 plus or minus 3 plus 1 will give us 2. So if I hit uh, F9, we get our 2, Control Z. And that's the trick for getting this right here to always show Monday. Control Enter, and let's test it. Let's just add uh, f 2. Okay, so Friday, it's still showing Monday there. Let's add fi uh, 5. August 3rd, so it's showing Monday. But now what if we add 7 here, which will give us Wednesday, still shows Monday. Absolutely cool. So that'll be our starting point for our chart. The formula is subsequently because the point of this is last nine weeks, based on whatever today's date is. Since that's a serial number, we can just say, hey, relative cell reference always look one above, minus 7. Control Enter and double click and send it down. So now this is dynamically uh, connected to that. As soon as it hits Monday, all of these will change. Now for a chart, um, I don't really want this Monday because that's it's not just Monday number. It's the week of Monday. And so I want to create a label. You know, with when you're uh, creating information for people to use to make decisions, you want to be as clear as possible. If I had this date and the sales number, which we'll get from that data set over here in just a moment, it would maybe misleading because you might think, oh, that's what we sold on Monday. So I'm going to create a label here using concatenation equals, this is a text formula, in quotes, week of space and double quote. Now, the way you construct text formulas, uh, there's lots of elements that can go into a text formula, but if it's typed in text, it's got to be in quotes. And you got to spell check while you're in edit mode, because once you hit enter, spell check won't catch spelling errors like that I'm famous for uh, with concatenation. Now we're going to use shift 7. That's the ampersand. That is the join symbol, because we want week of Monday, July 27th. Now I'm going to control enter. Oh, that won't work, because of course that's a serial number underneath in formulas. Never look at formatting. That, like uh, most Excelers in the world don't know this, but that is not Monday, July 27th. It's that serial number. So we need to convert that serial number to that format uh, and convert it to text for our text label. So we're going to use the text function. That's its purpose. Text function takes a number, converts it to text. In a format, you specify. Comma, the format, and you got to know custom number formatting for this. It's custom number format comes from the number tab in the format cells dialog box. Double quote, and we want month slash day slash year. Clo uh, end double quote. Now, that custom number format has to be in double quotes for the text function to understand it. Close parentheses, control enter, and double click and send it down. Now, that label is dynamic, right? As we change this to 12, then everything updates. I'm going to control Z. Uh, before we can make our chart, we still have to do one more thing. We need to retrieve our sales numbers. Remember, this is dynamic. Um, and actually, before we create our chart, I would like to convert this to a table because not only do we want our uh, chart to be based on the today function and the last nine weeks, but I want to be able to add records to the bottom of this and have everything update. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to convert this to a table. Or in 2003, it's called a list. Now it doesn't work in earlier versions, so you have to have 2003, 7, or 10, which will come out next year. Uh, a table has to have field names at the top, records have to be, or rows have to be records, no blanks inside the table, and there's got to be blanks all the way around the outside. That's why I have that thin line right there. I'm going to click in one cell. In 2003, you control L. In 2007, and later versions, control T. Uh, and my table has headers. So there you have it. We have our uh, dynamic. Uh, 
range there. Now, this dynamic range, as we add data here, will just be feeding these formulas here. The chart will actually always be looking here. All right, so let's do our lookup. Now, we can't use VLOOKUP here. We, this is our text label. This is our serial number. Because our table has serial numbers here, we need to use this number to look it up. But look at this. There's the lookup value, and there's the value we want to return to the left. So we can't use VLOOKUP. We'll have to use INDEX AND MATCH. So I'm going to come here, equals INDEX. It needs the array of values to look up. That's this right here. I'm going to click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, and F4 to lock it and jump the screen back in view. And then comma. Now we need a row number. Now what index is expecting is it, if it's Monday 105, it wants 1. If it's July 27th, that's the 30th value, and so it needs 30. So that blue area right there needs actual row numbers, not these ones, but the actual relative position, 1, 2, 3, etc. So we're going to use the match function to deliver it. That is what the match function does. Match function delivers relative position or ordinal position. Our lookup value is going to be that, comma, and there's our screen tip right there at lookup value, comma. The lookup array, it's not going to be our sales numbers, but it's going to be the exact parallel uh, uh, range with the same dimensions. So I click there, control shift down arrow. The same dimensions, right? So it gives, if it finds a date, it gives one for this one, two for this one, three for this one, etc. I'm going to hit F4 to lock it comma, our match type is going to be 0 because we're looking up an exact match. Close parentheses on the match. Notice the index, the screen tips are always polite. We, that's all we need. We're not, we don't have a table with uh, two dimensions. We just have a row, so all we need is the row number, not a column. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And sure enough, there it got uh, the right values. We already saw that that was the right value. All right, now we're ready we can create our chart. I'm going to create a, a bar chart. There's our labels and our data below, so you highlight that. Insert. There's our bar. Now I want to do a bunch of stuff to this chart. First off, notice that everything isn't lined up. See, that's a, a 6, not a 0, 6. That's an 8, a 1 instead of 0. That's easily fixed with our text function. So I'm going to click right here and hit F2. F2, and if we put an MM and a DD, that tells the text function to always format it with 2. So it'll put a 0, 1 if it's 1. If it's 12, it'll be 1, 2. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Perfectly nicely lined up. Now, this label, I'm just going to click on it and start typing. Last nine weeks of data. You could type whatever you want and then hit Enter. I'm going to click on this and change the uh, size to maybe 12. I'm going to click right here, go change the size there to 8. I'm going to scroll over here. That is called chart junk. We do not need that. I'm also going to get rid of these right here, clicking on them. Sometimes they're hard to click, but um, the keyboard shortcut for delete is delete. I also would like to change the colors here. Control 1. And under fit, actually, you know what? We should sh increase the gap right here. I mean, decrease the gap just a little bit. There we go. And then go to fill. And I'm going to say vary colors by point. Just like that, we get it. Now, uh, let's add some uh, data labels at the top. Layout, data labels, and I'm going to say outside end. Ah, now we have chart junk. There's some there and there. We do not need this. And that will be nice because it will give us some more room. And so there it is, a very nice uh, dynamic chart. Let's try a few things. Let's see our beautiful chart here. Let's see if we can get it to update. I'm going to come up here and just uh, add uh, 15. So now it's August 13th, which gives us a Monday of 810. So our formula is updated there. The uh, values from our index updated and delivered those here. Uh, how about this? Th I'd really like these at the top. 
Cont I'm going to click on the axis here. By the way, in 2007 and later, it's so nice that they, when you click on the, the axis, it's actually visible. In earlier versions, it was hard to see. Control-1. And I want to say categories in reverse order under axis options, and then click close. So there we have it. One last thing, let's check. Let's go add some records to the bottom of this. And watch this. Here's how you add records. I'm clicking in the last cell right here, and I hit my tab key. No way. It automatically put in a Monday. It's interpreting that we always want Mondays. So I'm going to type 100 here, tab, tab. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. Um, 150, tab, tab. Uh, 125, tab, tab, 122. So there we have it. Um, we at, it, it updated. I mean, obviously, the table expanded when we used tab, which is cool enough as it is. But let's go test it. So we have a, a 10, 12. Let's put in 10, 7. And this better be the first one. So I'm just going to type 10 slash 7. Uh, and then enter. And did it work? Did it update? It got the date there. Oh, that is so beautiful. That updated right there. Everything in this chart updated, including our numbers we just typed in down at the bottom. Let's see, 125, 120, the 1021, did that work? Ah, if that isn't magic, I don't know what is. So that is a, a dynamic and automatic last nine weeks chart. All right, we'll see you next trick.